What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here. We're gonna have a guest on the channel that we haven't had here in a while. This, uh, this guest actually deserves no introduction, but uh, let me go, let me go get them. They're shy. Somebody we haven't seen. <laughs> oh. It's Skunk Works. The Strafe RGB Mark II from Corsair features genuine Cherry MX switches, per-key RGB backlighting, USB pass-through for convenient access, and dedicated multimedia keys with integrated volume knob, making it a great value for gamers and keyboard enthusiasts alike. Learn more about the Strafe RGB Mark II by visiting the link down below. So this system has actually been running back at my house now for, shoot, almost two years. As long as I have been in this studio, this, remember, this never came over with me, and a lot of you guys have missed it. She's dirty. She's always been a little dirty though, if you know what I'm saying. She's uh, a little dusty. Man, those things fit tight. We need to clean it out a little bit, but that's actually not the purpose of today's video. Holy crap, those fans are filthy. We are gonna... These things are built for tough, let me tell you. This thing would carry Silverado up a wall of cinder blocks, if you know what I'm saying. A mountain of cinder blocks. It's a throwback to the old 80s commercials for Ford. But anyway, I digress, that's besides the point. Today's video is actually about Intel CPUs and Spectre slowdown. Because a fun fact about this system, this is still running Windows 8.1 Pro. I never upgraded this system to Windows 10. I avoided all of the free updates. I never took any of uh, Microsoft's sham ploys to get you to upgrade all of their spyware. And to be honest, I never had any performance issues, and so why bother? Ugh, that's so bad. I read an article today, and I'm gonna put a link to it down below, that talked about Intel trying to suppress and block independent reviewers, or anyone for that matter, to actually talk about Spectre slowdown and showing comparative, compare and contrast with before and after patching. And this is on their most recent licensing for the most recent Spectre and, and Meltdown patches. And the whole reason why I'm doing this quite a bit late is because Intel seems to think that at some point that they could tell me that I couldn't do that. Well, to that I say, I'm gonna do it anyway. We are gonna be running Cinebench, obviously, R15. We're gonna be running Firestrike, Firestrike Extreme, and Firestrike Ultra. So those are the four tests I'm gonna run. They sh those two combined with the CPU score and the GPU score and the Cinebench should be enough to at least paint somewhat of a picture of what performance is going to do once we go to Windows 10. Okay, Cinebench R15, here we go. This is going to be our base run. And let's see, look at all them cores. Man, this is, see, there's no need to update your systems every year like, like I do. <laughs> I mean, we kind of have to around here. We have to build systems, it's what we do. But that's why this system has actually remained untouched for two solid years now, even the fluids. Although I think I have to top off my CPU fluid. Yeah. Okay, 2,308 was our score on that one. So I'm gonna run it one more time. 2,321, okay, so the difference was what? One point. Okay, we're gonna run Cinebench one more time. 2,310. Okay, so it was a 2,308 or something like that, a 2,321 and a 2,310. So I'll just put 2,310. And now we're gonna run all three of our uh, 3D marks. So here's our total score, 34,620, which is pretty damn good. Uh, graphic score of 55,971. A physics, a physics score, I always say physics. A physics score of 27,405. This is the one we're really gonna look for right here. This is straight up CPU and CPU only. I'm most interested in this number because if this number goes down, then this number goes down because, well, not really a bottleneck, but this number is directly related to CPU performance because with these types of FPS figures right here, if the CPU can't keep up with 267 FPS, then of course it's gonna go down. And then our combined score. So we're gonna take all three of these numbers across all three tests, run it again on Windows 10, and we'll compare. So I will save you guys the boredom of watching us do this very repetitively, and I will just come back with the results. And of course, after the Windows update, and then the updates to the update. Hey, you know why you keep saying physics? Because apparently Nvidia pays me to. <laughs> So 
So here are the results. Uh, Windows 8.1, we got a 34,620 with a physics score of 27,405, graphics score of 55,971, and a combined score of 9989. Now Windows 10, we actually saw over about 1,100 point reduction on the physics score. Not really enough to really notice like day to day, but there was indeed a reduction. Our average FPS dropped from 87 to 83.7. So we lost approximately, what, 3.3 F, FPS on that? Again, probably not gonna notice that. Our graphics score though, ironically on Windows 10 went up, which could vary be for a few different reasons. One, it just could have been the improvement in Windows 10 operating system in terms of games. Um, this is using DirectX 11, this is not a DirectX 12 test, so that shouldn't have had anything to do with it. So that's why our difference in the main score wasn't that far off, but our combined score on Windows 10 dropped approximately 417 points from a 9989 to a 9572. Bottom line there is nobody is gonna really notice that. Now, if we go all the way up to ultra, we're gonna skip extreme, we're gonna go straight to ultra. So 1080p high FPS all the way up to ultra 4K, which means more load on the GPUs, less on the CPU. Now the ultra score was a 14,079 on Windows 10 versus a 13,994 on Windows 8.1. Our physics score is still lower though in 4K by approximately 1,000 points. However, our graphics score was overall about 80 points higher on Windows 10. So kind of staying in line with what we saw with the uh, standard test, where our graphics score was a little bit higher and our CPU score was a little bit lower. Our combined score was also higher here on Ultra in Windows 10 than it was in Windows 8. But all of these are within margin of error. You're not gonna notice any of this in any sort of a gaming scenario, but I wouldn't have expected to considering the fact that we have such a high core count, high core clock, that it, this is the type of, type of thing that if you were noticing this sort of a, a percentage of change in like an i3 or something like that, you definitely would have noticed it a bit more. So in terms of gaming, at least in this particular scenario, um, Skunk Works is, affected a little bit by Spectre and Meltdown patching. In fact, the BIOS we loaded on this motherboard to install Windows 10 specifically stated it was for the Spectre and Meltdown patch microcode updates. So there is that. But there's one other test we need to do here. We need to do our Cinebench. I think we should do that live. That way we can kind of compare our results with our first test. So here we are, Windows 64-bit. We need to bring up our previous results right here as this is going. And our previous score, if you recall, was a 2310. We ran it three times and it fluctuated around that score. So let's see what we got right here. I'm expecting it to be maybe 2281. That's my guess. 2281 would be my, my prediction. Let's see if I'm right or wrong. 2313, so three points higher than the 2310 we settled on. So I still don't know why my 7900X on my D-Frame build with faster Titan cards on a newer platform is slower than Skunk Works on older hardware. Slower graphics cards, technically a previous generation older CPU, getting better results than the newer hardware. So you could guess, I guess you could take this video and swing it from a comparative results of Spectre. Remember I'm doing this because Intel said you can't, at least in their EULA as it, as it stands today. Not to try and prove or disprove whether or not Spectre is gonna ruin your day, but just to test it because they said we can't. But I still don't know exactly uh, why the results are the way they are. So if you know, how about you tell me down in the comments below. I mean, temperatures are well in check on both systems. Yes, this is a soldered IHS versus the 7900X having a TIM in there. But uh, end of the day, you're not gonna notice any of this, at least not in this level of hardware. If you guys have noticed any sort of massive negative performance impact on your hardware regarding Spectre and Meltdown, can you let me know what hardware you're running down in the comments, that way I can try and maybe recreate that myself. Um, but at least for us in this exact situation, although we know that the patching existed and we know that Intel was worried about something, which is why the language was in the EULA to begin with, um, wasn't noticeable would have never noticed it in this situation. All right, guys, we're gonna go. Thanks for this video where we just decided to uh, kind of stick the middle finger up to the man. I'm, I'm the man in some instances, so to myself. All right, guys, we're gonna go. Thanks for watching, and as always, we will see you in the next one.